But uh, so yeah, so I'm a big believer in associations, um, NCI, Nate, uh, all these different types of training organizations absolutely have the best, um, we, we definitely have the best interest of the industry in mind. So I, I think guys in our industry, unfortunately, they think that doing this is a lot easier than it really is as far as running a business. Question for you. Growing up in your professional experience with your family business, were you ever um, exposed to or get involved in any trade organizations at all to help fill in some of that information that you needed yeah. or were desiring? What? Because the reason I ask is I, I was the same way. I, I actually had a family uh, run refrigeration business that I, in the school of hard knocks, learned by, by using my hands and never had technical, formal technical training. But I found the gaps that I needed through RSES and ACA. And then, you know, it sounds like NCI is taking it even to the next level in sales. Um, so did you have exposure early on to some of those organizations to help you out? Uh, yeah, yeah. Great question, Rob. Thank you for that one. Um, that's a softball, dude. That's excellent. <laughs> well, I bring it up for a reason because, oh, well, there's, 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 there's a whole new generation of people coming into the trade, right? I mean, a, yeah, a, lot, a lot of the experience has gone away and I think it's important for people coming in to hear this because there's, yeah. there's help out there other than a, a that's right. School. That's right. Absolutely. So when I, when I first went to work for my dad, I just sold a software company that I started in Atlanta, a company called H2 Solutions. We built some of the very first dispatching systems for the industry in the DOS platform. That's For those of you who don't know what DOS means, that's disk operating system. It actually is the underlying operating system for Windows, but don't, don't worry about all that. Anyway, the operating system was before Windows. So it's an, I'm, a, I'm an old guy, so you know, it happens. But when I sold that business in 91, I came down to Columbus, Georgia. My, my company was in Atlanta and I sold the business, came down to Columbus. And because I didn't really have the technical skills, my dad, who had been running the business that his father started in 1956, my dad started running it in 77 when he retired from the Navy. And when, when I came to, to work, the first thing he did was he sent me to a whole series of ACCA training classes. So I went through manual J, manual D, manual S, manual N. So I got all the engineering side. I probably still got a bunch of the books back there on my book bookshelves. Um, so I went through all those types of classes to begin with to really understand the nuts and bolts of the system. And then uh, of what it took to design a system properly. He, th he thought it would be important that I understood that if I was going to be in the heating and air business. And I, yeah, I found out that was pretty important. That also got me really engaged in getting involved in trade associations. My dad was a former president of the State Heating and Air Association here in Georgia. And uh, I also wound up going up that path, although I only got to treasurer before we sold the business. I didn't become president of the, uh, of the state association like my dad did, but I did get on the national board for ACCA. I was actually the region, I think it was region six back in the day, basically the Southeastern United States. I was the representative for this area for the ACCA national board. So I was actually a national board member from about 90, 94 to 99 when dad sold the business. Actually, one of the hardest decisions I had when dad sold the business, um, I decided to leave the, leave the company after a few months. So just, I, I came to work for my dad. I didn't come to work for somebody mm -hmm. else. So I came to work for my dad when he retired, I just felt a nudge to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I had to, I, I left the company that dad sold the business to. And with that, I had to resign from the board of ACCA because I was no longer an active contractor. Right. <laughs> that was a hard part of the decision because right. I was actually next in line. I was at the level of national vice president in the way it was organized back then. So my next year in 90, well, in 2000, yeah, in 2000, I would have been a, a national president of ACCA. But uh, so, yeah, so I'm a big believer in associations, um, NCI, Nate, uh, all these different types of training organizations absolutely have the best, um, we, we definitely have the best interest of the industry in mind, that's for sure, and trying to improve it to, to you know, to elevate that professionalism is kind of critical. I think the, the uh, I just got to, I just love this. Just, uh, this is, yeah, so Tuesday, earlier this week, 
I got an email from one of our distributor partners that hosts our training classes from NCI on a regular basis. And this uh, tech support guy sends me an email and he says, hey, I got two technicians who think they're ready to start their own business. Well, do you guys have any classes, you know, kind of like a boot camp type thing for guys that want to start their own business? And I'll tell you what I did. I sent them a list of books. <laughs> I said, read both, all, the, all five of these books twice before you think about starting your business, keep your day job right now. Mm -hmm. Before you think about starting your own business, read these books. And first one was Ron Smith's, right? Yep. Number one book, got to read it. You got to read Ron Smith's book, uh, HVAC Spells Wealth. It's, it's, the, it's, it's a handbook for, for how to create one of these businesses, really what it comes down to. Yeah. And I had him, I, I had him, I listed that one. I listed uh, E-Myth HVAC contractor with Gerber and, uh, um, yeah, blew my mind. My mind just, okay. it's one of these gray hair things. And then a couple of Ruth King books and things like that. Yep. So I said, yeah. look, here's the knowledge. It's right here in the book. And actually I also, uh, also added a recent one, um, build and grow your HVAC business, which is actually by Greg McAfee up in Ohio, another contractor and Marine Semper Fi Marine, mm -hmm. uh, that, absolutely has nailed it. I mean, the guy's created a great business and he's documented how he turned $274 into a multi-million dollar company, you know, and Ron Smith's was how did he turn $500 into a multi-million dollar company? And so I, I think guys in our industry, unfortunately, they think that doing this is a lot easier than it really is as far as running a business. Most people and, that I know that started their own business by jumping out of a service truck and then trying to jump into the business flat out tell me that it's a whole lot easier running a service call than it is running a business. Exactly. Not, not, and it's an, it's an important conversation. And this is why we talk about this because literally, you know, as we mentioned, the, the trade schools are good at creating mechanics, but there's so much more. I mean, you talk about communication skills, all these soft skills, uh, you know, how to talk to a homeowner, you know, how to communicate what you see back to the homeowner. And, um, you know, just there's, and, and, I, and most trade schools don't have indoor air quality training. I mean, talk about part of a system. It's your house, your breathing air. And every, we have everything to do with it. <laughs> so, um, and that's why I think, um, you know, because, and look at the population of HVAC uh, companies out there. There's, there's owner operators that actually work in the field. There's, you know, there's, there's massive companies that have departments and then there's technicians. And I think the message here is for all the, that, that diverse population is at NCI, um, can take them to the next level, but it's, but here we, here we go. We're going to go from a mechanic and I love this word. And I want, we'll talk about your video in a second, but from a mechanic to a craftsman, right. Mm -hmm. And there's value in that. And if you, if this is your livelihood and this is your day-to-day -day livelihood and you're just, and, and you might think of yourself as a lonely old, lonely old mechanic or an installer, guess what? You, you're going to provide, think bigger. You're going to provide more value to your company. Even if you are working for somebody else to become that craftsman and you'll, the world opens up, doesn't it? I mean, that opens up the whole world for people. Wouldn't you agree? Without, without a doubt. In fact, I, I tell young youngsters, especially when I encounter them and they're like, man, I'm just, I'm just really struggling to figure out what I want to do. I say, well, I'll tell you what, if it was me, I would go learn a trade that is in demand. That is, uh, what, what, what did they call us right at the beginning of this pandemic? What, what was our new, our mm, new the label? E word, right? We were essential, essential? <laughs> we got the oh essential we already knew we were essential <laughs> try to operate your building without a air conditioning system and see how long you stay in that building um we always knew we were essential but we were classified as an essential business and that actually has attracted interestingly enough it's also attracted a lot of investment capital into this industry right now because they're so oh, yeah they are essential wait a minute i bet there's money to be made there and there's a bunch of people that are scurrying around exactly right Oh man, the especially the last seen. couple of years because of yeah. that. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's absolutely tons right? of change and involvement going on here. So um, but I, I tell these kids, I say, look, you know what, do this because you can take those tools and that knowledge. There's a skill set that you're going to gain. There's a tool set. You're going to know how to learn, learn how to use, but the key is you got to get your mindset right first, or right? you got to say, you know what, I can make six digit incomes and not have all the responsibility of, of, hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loan debt to get a degree where they've indoctrinated me with a bunch of BS and then send me out in the world and I can't find a job. I can do a hundred thousand dollar plus income on a regular basis with a trade where I'm actually helping people enjoy the safest, healthiest, 
most comfortable and energy efficient indoor environment possible and actually make a change, make a, make a significant improvement in, in people's lives. I mean, that's a good thing to do. So when, when, I, when I tell them that, I say, you could take your toolkit then and you could just look at anywhere on the map and you could decide where you want to live because there's always somebody who's wanting to hire a good quality person with the right mindset, with the right tool set and the right skill set. You can go to work anywhere in this country. It's, it's hysterical. I say the same thing, David. Just pick a, pick a trade and learn it, become good at it. You can go anywhere. Literally, Absolutely. you can name the place you want to go. That's um, right. And it's just, I, I, I'm happy to see it is evolving. And I think we are, there's a whole, like I said, we, there's a whole new generation of folks coming in.